antes da organização da Love Dosha, eu trabalhava como biscateiro, assim como pescador. And this is my house. Isso principalmente naqueles pescadores que usam rede. Aqueles é que fazem uma maldade na água. As redes às vezes têm estado na água por mais dias. Os animais são pegos e voltam a apodrecer antes de sair. O nosso ecoturismo começou a cair depois que a empresa de Jatabai perdeu o seu proprietário. Desde ali então, a nossa área tornou-se vulnerável à pesca. A sustentabilidade da pesca na comunidade tem ido bem em períodos, não quase todo o tempo. A maioria do tempo, o maré está... temos mau tempo e não conseguimos entrar. Mas nos dias em que o maré está bom, conseguimos sustentar as nossas famílias. Whether you live inland in an urban area or by the coast, the ocean is integral to you functioning as a human being. A huge portion of the world's population depends on fish as a protein source. So if we don't look after the oceans, a huge amount of the world will starve. When I was here, I saw my first shark killing and that had a, um, very big emotional effect on me. So I spent about two days super angry. I had lots of emotions, but anger was the predominant feeling. And I was angry at the fishermen that were doing the initial killing. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it wasn't them I was angry at. The reason they were killing the shark was to get the fins. And that was the fin industry as a whole that I needed to direct my anger at. And then I wanted to know how bad that situation was here. So yes, killing that one shark was sad, but if they're doing that on a daily basis, that then becomes a problem for the shark population as a whole and the biodiversity of the area as a whole and the entire marine ecosystem. It's a very special part of the country uh, where you can see humpback whales, mantas, whale sharks. And so it's really important that they succeed in establishing this protected area. And the way that they're going about it is by trying to create something that's community led community fostered, which requires, of course, helping people establish a connection to the ocean and to the life within it. Ginshata ser de amanhã não de hoje, né? A ser um ginshata desenvolvido. Então, uma contribuição para a comunidade hum, fica muito difícil através do valor monetário alguém quando não tem. Não era possível, não estávamos a conseguir por nada, porque Não somos todos que temos empregos. A maioria não tem emprego. The ultimate goal here in Mozambique is to have the area that we operate in declared as a marine protected area. However, in order for that to happen and be successful, one of the key things we need is a community that has the capability. Um, that's across a broad range of skill sets that are required, uh, from things like being able to operate an ecotourism facility or set of facilities in order to be able to support um, the community and transition the community away from unsustainable practices, in particular unsustainable fishing practice. In an area where we've got about 70% unemployment, 
So you're providing a lot of different sources of income for a lot of people in the area through an ecotourism based approach. And it's a sustainable income as well. By having a multi pronged approach, you've got multiple reasons why a marine protected area would be good and you're equipping the community to manage it so it becomes much more financially feasible. Autoemprego quer dizer ajudar-nos a ter nosso próprio emprego para que no futuro da nossa geração continuemos a ter nosso próprio dinheiro. When I saw those humpback whales breaching all around us, there were about 16 of them just hopping and playing and fin waving and slapping and, you know, they're like 20 feet from the boat. It was breathtaking. And these are the things that I want people to see through my photos and experience through my photos because I know that many people won't get these opportunities, but we can develop an appreciation through the lens. For me, what's important when I'm photographing wildlife is maintaining ethics at all times. And so that means not altering the behavior of the wildlife by keeping a certain distance and not engaging in any activities that bait or lure wildlife to you. That's why this job requires a lot of patience. It just takes time and uh, it's important that we also have a sense and a grasp on what we're presenting to the world. I'm a marine biologist, so science is integral to what we do um, and our aims as an organisation. So we do coral reef surveys, fisheries surveys, uh, ocean trash surveys and um, humpback whale surveys. So the fisheries research is to prove that the current methods of fishing are unsustainable. The coral reef research is to prove that we, what we have is worth protecting. We measure absolutely everything that comes up in the fisheries catch and we're doing that to look at the sustainability of the catches and reasons and ways to improve reef health and obviously with improved reef health it has higher biodiversity uh, comes more tourism and then more money for the local community and ultimately it's an upward positive spiral. The ocean trash research is quite a new um, area of research that we're doing, but we're doing lots of beach cleans and clean up some dives anyway, so we figured we may as well log it, and we can work out whether it's international trash or local trash. We're on the edge of the Indian Ocean garbage patch where we are, so that we have a lot of international trash washing up on our shores, um, and. I would say more from our research, more international trash than uh, local trash and I think that shocks them to realise that a bottle that went in Indonesia has washed up on our shores and we see people change their attitude towards waste disposal as a result of their time with us. So one of the reasons we find bigger bottles like this is A, they're being dropped off the huge fishing vessels that go past here and also the gillnet fishermen that fish here use empty plastic bowls as floats for their gillnets to keep them out in the water. That's also one of the reasons we find flip-flops and shoes that are also being used as floats for their gillnets. So that's about uh, 
1.9 kilos of ocean trash you've managed to remove in less than an hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty that scary. Is, that is very scary. So Love the Ocean sponsors two schools in the community by providing classrooms and education, but they also teach about marine biology and conservation. Well, first thing that when you go to the schools is you see these beautiful murals of whale sharks and underwater wildlife. And the classrooms are all brightly decorated with like the planets and this solar system. And it's really amazing how just by embedding those concepts at an early age, you can really shift perspectives on the ocean. Este grupo aqui é grupo de tubarões, enquanto que aqui é grupo de peixe grande, enquanto que aqui é onde temos os peixinhos, aqui é onde temos os pescadores. Quando aqueles pescadores ali entram no mar e começam a pescar o tubarão, quer dizer o quê? Este todo tubarão aqui vai, já que não temos mais o tubarão, para comer e os peixinhos vão quando já não temos mais o peixinho para alimentar o peixe grande. Como todos nós sabemos que o tubarão sem ele vai matar quase todo o oceano, não é? E o mesmo tubarão é muito importante para os turistas. Não tenho estimativa certa, mas há dois anos atrás morreram 12. Quase quando se falava da água, eu ia à praia com meu pai, mas voltava sempre a usar água. That has instilled a fear in the local community of the sea and what's in the sea as well. Um, so we take the top five kids from each class every week uh, and we teach five classes, so that's around 25 kids. And we do the free swimming lessons on the weekends for the community here to appreciate the asset that they have under the water, they have to get to know it. And currently, nobody in the community swims that well, nobody here in the community dives, and they have spectacular diving asset off the coast here. So in order for a community to be able to fall in love and want to protect this amazing asset that it has, they have to be able to experience it. They have to be able to see it. Are you gonna swim? From where to where? From the beginning to the end, and I'm gonna time you. Do you wanna see how fast you are? <laughs> Uh, seven seconds. Seven seconds. <laughs> Eu me sinto maior. Uma pessoa importante para a minha comunidade. Eu sempre tenho me dado o tempo de ensinar as crianças, mesmo fora, assim como na água. By teaching young people how to swim, we can teach them how to snorkel, we can teach them how to dive we can teach them how to operate boats. And then a set of industries come off the back of that. If you've got a young person that can swim, then they can learn how to surf. You've got a community around that that can build up an industry, even if it's just a micro industry of people who can build surfboards, can fix surfboards. And then you provide that opportunity for people to come and stay, teach surfing. I feel orgulhoso. I feel like I'm in the community. É um ato que todos querem. In general, whenever I'm doing storytelling, I think it's really important to know that you're not giving anyone a voice, you're amplifying voices. Um, for me, that's always been an integral part of why I do what I do. It's uh, not about me as a photographer. It's about the people uh, that I'm working with, about the organizations that I'm uplifting. Nós só conhecemos o mar de fora. Eu agora quero tentar conhecer o mar de fora, assim como de dentro. E para conhecer esse mar de dentro, tem que mergulhar. Eu quero também apreciar de perto aqueles animais que temos, que tenho visto ali no oceano. Isso quer dizer. Eu tenho visto muitas fotos. Eu quero ver e quero também tirar aquelas fotos de perto. My goal is for people to stop and stare long enough um, to 
maybe read those captions, see those calls to action and decide to take any form of action, whether it's changing their attitude, changing their behavior, or, you know, changing their lifestyle. Sem a pre a preservação, sem que alguns de, de, determinem a área da pesca, todos aqueles outros animais vão ser distintos. Se haver um lugar, uma determinação, um limite, isso quer dizer, temos que proteger o oceano para termos mais turistas, para podermos ter mais emprego e diminuirmos a pesca. Sim, sinto muito orgulhoso mesmo a mudança. Deve mudar mesmo para se terminar o meu mandato dizer que o líder sirva. Epa, estava a fazer bem. A huge portion of the world's population depends on fish as a protein source. One in five breaths is produced by the phytoplankton in the oceans. The ocean provides a massive source of income for people all over the world through ecotourism. So if you like breathing, if you like eating, if you like having fun, you should love the oceans. The majority of the world is made up of water and same goes for our bodies. We are sustained by water. Water sustains us. It's the lifeblood of the planet. Many people followed what I did. I came from nothing. I have to be someone until I finish the study. I have to contribute to be an example of my community. The organization of Love Ocean changed my life. From fishermen to the conservatory.